Hey everybody, Eric Caden here on YouTube. Want to do a quick video on some mulching. If you saw our videos back in the spring, I apologize for these weeds. I certainly let the pre-emergent and weed control kind of go over the last couple weeks. It is what it is. But back in the springtime, we put down seven cubic yards of um, cypress mulch and it's done pretty well it's held up we'll probably freshen that up in the spring and we might choose something that's a little darker color uh, not a huge fan of the light color of the mulch uh, next goal for next year is also get some sod in between these rose gardens where it's kind of 100 percent weeds but elsewhere it's I don't know what the cost is. It seems like it might be a little cheaper. I've done pine straw in the rose garden before. It's definitely a southern type of mulch um, in that we have a lot of pine trees. If you've seen any of our videos, um, sandy soil, lots of pine trees here in the eastern part of the state and throughout a lot of the southeast, azaleas and pine needles uh, go hand in hand. So we're going to freshen up this bed today. Um, I did cut down the... Um, um, not the day lilies, the canna lilies, um, cut those down. From what I read, the bulbs um, in the ground have already gotten all their energy now that the leaves have died off with our hard frost. So cut those down and we're gonna do some mulching. Reason why I'm doing pine straw here, uh, again, the cost might be a little bit cheaper. This is a pretty big area, but I've got some blueberry bushes. Uh, they like acidic soil and uh, specifically they like to be mulched with pine straw from what I've read. The other thing is we've got these Encore azaleas. Uh, so this whole area is going to be mulched in or remulched with pine straw. So I just want to give you a little before. Um, you can see back in the spring when I did the cypress, I did put down pine straw and it's there. It has a, a lighter color to it. It doesn't look as good as the fresh stuff. Um, I'll use it here, but one reason I don't like it for the rose garden, I know some rosarians use it, and it's, it's not a bad mulch. It does what a mulch is designed to do, retain moisture, um, temp um, make the uh, temperature extremes uh, not as much, so not as cold in the winter, not as hot in the summer. Modify is what I'm trying to say, the, uh, the soil temperature. It does all that, but it doesn't add a lot of organic value when it breaks down. It takes a little while to break down, which is a good thing if you don't want to have to replace it. In this case, we're going to top dress it, but we already have a good base coat. Um, I prefer a hardwood mulch because as this breaks down, uh, it is adding some humus and some good stuff uh, to the uh, the top layer of the uh, rose garden. So anywho, um, we'll get to the rose garden itself in terms of mulching in spring of 2021 when we get there. Wanted to give you a before, again, how it looks, um, this garden, and then we'll do an after. We're going to do the climbing roses, the azaleas, the blueberry bushes, and then this was our old compost pile on the far right and left are encore azaleas and in the middle is a black diamond crepe myrtle um, i just weeded this garden uh, sprayed roundup well away from the plants and then used a hoe uh, to dig up the rest and if you look really really carefully these yellow little dots that's my snapshot that's the pre-emergent that needs to be watered in we got about a third of an inch of rainfall yesterday so with the pine straw on top that should be good for the next couple months so we don't have any future weeds. This is a rose channel. So let me show you a couple quick roses that caught my attention even after the hard freeze we had. Uh, this is Marilyn Monroe, still looking quite good. Uh, that is Ring of Fire, looking good as well. Let's see, I saw a couple other, I'm always looking outside. I was checking the rain gauge this morning. Look at that. So again, some of them got a little frozen, but some were, um, I guess, more of a closed form. That's Let Freedom Ring. So the hard freeze really didn't affect them. And we certainly had it. Our temperature got down to 27 and all my, that's a Let Freedom Ring as well. All my weeds in the garden and that's Zach Nobles. All the weeds, um, at least the annual weeds, did get zapped by the frost. You can see here, this nuts edge got zapped by the frost. So we did have a killing frost, but a lot of the roses are still looking good. I don't know if it's because they're up higher or uh, they just were maybe closed, that's Jewel Grace, and they didn't get affected as much. So that's it um, for this part. Uh, when we get done with the uh, mulching of the pine straw, I'll show you uh, an after of that. But I want to show you a couple of the roses that are still blooming. So hold tight. We'll be done here with the help of the family. 
not too long. All right, everybody, we finished up the pine straw. You can see it's looking uh, pretty good. Hopefully you can tell despite it being um, getting toward dusk, it's getting a little dark. They come in bales. Um, for you northerners, you must wonder what all this stuff is. They come in bales. They're usually about $5 a piece, and they're wrapped in that orange twine. We tend to get from a local supplier, which is just down the road from us. Um, it's long leaf pine needles, and they're certainly not leaves, but they're long. Um, the needles themselves are very, very long. It's what is falling out of these trees um, that are in my neighbor's yard. Um, it tends to sit together better. The shorter needles, sometimes the big box stores will sell and they can blow around a little bit. And this is not a perfect technique, but if you watch any YouTube channels for landscaping, a lot of people, um, landscapers will do a technique called tucking, which is they spread the pine needles to the very edge of the bed and then use a leaf blower to blow it up under. And you can see a little bit of that now. If we had, I guess we used eight bales in this whole garden. Had we used a little bit more and it was a little thicker, it might be more defined, but the job got done. Um, again, this is a, a mulch that is used a lot in the Southeast because we have access to it. Um, but in addition, things like these blueberry bushes, these azaleas like it. And even rose gardens, a lot of rosarians in the deep south do use pine straw. Not against it. Um, I, I think it, it could be a little more expensive than wood, I'm not sure. The one thing that's definitely better than a bark mulch, it's way easier to put down. And I mean the pine straw. You ca carry those bales, and with my kids, it took us 30 minutes to do this. And this is a pretty large area. You can see this whole area back in here, and then our newer garden over here. This used to be the compost pile that used to just kind of be a weed pit. Um, that's mulched in now with the Encore Zellias and the Crepe Myrtle. So scroll back earlier in the video and you'll see quite a contrast. Um, as I mentioned before, the reason why I don't do it in the rose garden, I like to get some organic matter when it breaks down and you just don't get that with pine straw. So like with everything, it's a give and take. The plan next year, um, this is the first time I ever got uh, mulch delivered going back to the roses that cypress mulch we did that in uh, this past spring seven cubic yards um, I'll probably do that again but I want to get a darker mulch I'm not a fan of the dyed mulches but some type of more natural dark hardwood um, the light just didn't look that great with the centipede lawn um, but I'm learning a lot down here pine straw centipede for grass definitely different uh, than what I'm used to up north in terms of the northern grasses and the types of mulch we used up there. One last thing, um, the reason why I have different types of mulch in the yard, we mentioned that we like the uh, organic component of hardwood mulch when it breaks down for the roses. This is easier to spread over a large area. And then around the fire pit, we're gonna do some type of hardwood or something that's not quite as flammable as pine straw. So you'll notice the, uh, the fire pit is a decent distance away from the, the pine straw. And we always have a little um, canister of water to put the fire out anyway. But just to be extra safe, um, just kind of doing an overall tour. <clears throat> My lantana I trimmed up yesterday. Uh, some of these other perennials, <clears throat> excuse me, some of these other perennials are looking pretty good in terms of despite having a hard frost, they don't look like the lantana that definitely took it. Uh, last leaf with this, this is a purple cone flower. It's a little bit different than the original. <clears throat> this is a pink shade, but that thing is blooming despite the uh, 27 degree weather a couple days ago. So that might be it for a little while. Uh, we did a soil test video a couple days ago. Wanted to do this one on mulching. I hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving. If I don't do a video before then, I hope you're able to see family, even if it's virtual this year. I hope everybody's being safe. On November 30th, Palatine is going to start their shipping of their fall roses. Uh, I ordered three roses, two Moonstone and a Gemini. We will hopefully get those the first week of December. And when we do, we'll do a video on that. I ordered some ProMix uh, potting soil and we're going to pot those up. I'll explain why I pot my roses in the fall here. Um, up north, I would plant them straight into the ground. And even with snow and cold temperatures, they did well. Uh, but the roses here in the south, when I planted in bare root in the fall, just did not do well. So now I, I pot them up. And that's probably because we're, we don't really truly go dormant <clears throat> some years like we do up north. But I'm into the shed because we're going to probably plant them in 
one of these uh, big pots I've got back here. I've got a whole whole mess of pots to, to fool around with. So that's it from the garden. That's what you can look forward to coming up. It'll be a video on potting up those fall roses. And I kind of alluded to why I pot the roses here as opposed to put them in the ground. It's really all about where you live because I've certainly done things differently when I lived in different parts of the country. Hope all is well. And again, I hope everybody has a good Thanksgiving, is safe. And as always, I appreciate the comments on the videos. Um, what do you use to mulch? Uh, this is the second application of pine straw this season in this garden. Do you use something else? Do you pay to get it delivered, to put down? Do you have uh, some tips on what you do in your garden? Love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate the new subscribers. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone.